For many people, Lourdes is that place in France where Our Lady appeared, isn't it? And actually, we don't really know the true history of the place or the true way in which it's grown to become one of the largest sites for pilgrimage in the entire world. Lourdes shouldn't actually be really that special. It's just a small little town in the south of France, just below a group of mountains called the Pyrenees. And with a tiny little town of no real importance, really, for many years. It all started just over 150 years ago, in 1858. There was a poor girl called Bernadette and she lived in a really poor family. And I mean really, really poor. She didn't live in a house like everybody else. She lived in a place called the Cachot, which was an old jail. And it was, the reason it was an old jail was because they believed that it shouldn't be used for prisoners anymore. It was so dirty and unhygienic and a horrible place to be that even prisoners didn't deserve uh, to live in there. And one day she was out collecting firewood with her sisters. Her sisters went off across the river and Bernadette couldn't go with them because she was too poorly. And she had a vision of a beautiful lady. She didn't know it at the time but it was our lady, the Virgin Mary, Jesus' mum. And she appeared to her with messages, lots of messages over lots of different times. Talking about the importance of saying sorry for our sins, of prayer and of just being good people. She also bought something else because the space where they were meeting, it used to be kind of like, a bit like a dumping ground really, uh, the kind of back end of the town, right the way down the bottom of a hill. And you'll, you'll know that if you go there, you'll see the big hill and you go right down to the bottom, right by the River Garve. And it's kind of a beautiful setting now, but it probably wasn't back then. But in that setting, Bernadette came back time and time again to, to hear what this lady was saying and she was going back to her mates, to her parents and to the parish priest saying, look, I'm seeing these amazing visions and they were like, yeah, of course you are, jog on. She asked Bernadette to wash in the water. So Bernadette uh, went to the water to wash in it, but Mary stopped her. Not the river, but she pointed at a piece of ground. Which seemed like a strange thing to do, but Bernadette trusted um, the lady and she dug in the in the ground with her hands and this spring of water came up and Mary said to Bernadette that she wanted people to drink the water and to bathe in the water and they would be healed. The second thing that Mary asked Bernadette to do was she said she wanted a church built on the site of the of the grotto there so that there are now three churches built on top of each other um, you'll see when you see a picture of Lords the, the church with the spire um, they're built on top of the on top of the grotto where, where Mary appeared to Bernadette. And the third thing she asked uh, Bernadette to do is she said she wanted the people to come in procession. So one of the other things you may have seen from the photos of Lords is everyone walking along holding these banners up and holding candles. And that's them processing to in front of the Rosary Basilica, one of the big churches, uh, coming in procession as Our Lady asked them to. And one of the key moments was when the parish priest, who actually really started to believe in her story a little bit, he said, well, go and ask this lady who she is. What, what was her name? And she went and, and our lady said, I am the Immaculate Conception. Bernadette went back to this priest and said, the lady said she's the Immaculate Conception. It was at that point the priest knew that this has got to be something, something real. Because Bernadette was illiterate, she wasn't educated, and she certainly wouldn't have known that the Vatican had just passed uh, a kind of instruction on church teaching that said that actually Our Lady was immaculately conceived herself and that that title had just been given to her. There's not a chance she would have known that. I think what resonates with me with Bernadette is the fact that she was just an ordinary little girl who um, had courage. I often think back to if Mary had appeared to me when I was a little girl, would I have the courage to um, go under scrutiny from my family, uh, from my friends, from, from the people who lived around me? And I'm not sure I would have done. Quite often we, we sort of think perhaps there's something hugely special about Bernadette, that she was chosen for a special reason. But she was a child of God, just like you and I. And because of that, we're all incredibly special. So when Mary, when, when Mary appeared to Bernadette, Bernadette could have behaved in several different ways. She could have believed in what she'd seen, but did nothing about it. But she decided not to do that. She decided to go back and tell everyone about it. And more and more people started to come and try and see these visions and, and they couldn't. And they kept calling her mad and they kept calling her a liar. But Bernadette just kept doing what she did, come back, praying. Well, miracles started to happen. And the amazing thing is, in Lourdes, to this day, miracles still happen. There are around 70 or 80 uh, verified miracles that took place in this incredible spot. And really now, what people go for is two things. One, to get closer to our faith, to pray with Our Lady, to help us get close to God and to understand what it means to kind of make our lives better. But two, they go for healing. 
they go to be healed. Not necessarily physically, not necessarily to fix your broken arm or, or, or to fix your kind of uh, injured side. They go because that healing can sometimes be of a different kind, a spiritual or emotional or physical. God knows what we need and God heals us and gives us the opportunity for healing throughout our lives. And Lord's is a place you will find that. Bernadette, of course, went on to become a nun and devote her life to God. Saint Bernadette, as she is now, is a fairly big deal. But what's really important is she was a young person when she met Our Lady. A young person who was true, who was strong, who stuck to her, her beliefs, and in doing so has now brought, over the years, tens of millions of people to pray with and walk with Our Lady in that hope of finding healing. So the Lord's story started in 1858, but it still carries on today. Between six and seven million people visit Lourdes every single year. People who are uh, ill go in search of healing, but also uh, people go in terms of looking for spiritual healing, looking for emotional healing, looking to experience that closeness with God, but also this fantastic sense of community that you get from going to Lourdes, especially with your diocese. The fact that there are thousands of people there, all with similar feelings and, 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 and beliefs to you, with questions, things they're trying to find out, and all being there, that sense of togetherness is amazing. Our diocese go to Lourdes every year in July, and it would be fantastic if you could get to one of those six million people and experience how fantastic Lourdes is yourself.